Welcome, welcome to the Simply Put Podcast show, the show in which I, James, talk about a video game for a little bit, expressing the good and the bad parts of which I thought were the good and the bad parts. So, in today's show is Sleeping Dogs. Sleeping Dogs was released on August the 14th, 2012, published by Square Enix, the same people who do the Final Fantasy and various other titles. What it primarily is, is an open world game where you play as a character called Wei Shen, who essentially is an undercover cop infiltrating the triads. That's the underlining story of it all. To put it simply, very much a GTA story vibes you get from it, but we'll get into that later. So let's talk a little bit about what Sleeping Dogs is and was to me. I remember getting Sleeping Dogs for my birthday as it was on the 6th of August and it was around that time Fallout New Vegas and Dead Rising 2 came out as I I vaguely remember having them alongside each other and I vividly remember enjoying it sitting on the couch playing and playing until I literally fell asleep playing it one time so recently the definitive edition was released for free for Xbox One users who have a gold subscription, and I decided to relive the game. And in doing so, I realized why I felt so good and almost addictive. And it comes down to a few things for me. One, being the collectibles. I'm a big fan of collectathons as they're just, they're just fun to me. Back when you used to collect Pokemon cards, stickers, and all those fun things as a kid, to have them in a video game, was really exciting for me. Sleeping Dogs has that open world trope of collectibles, but I just admired how they actually affected everything. From the health shrines to increasing your health, to money boxes giving you money, it was all great. Another thing I realized replaying it was just how real the story and the characters felt. You got that sense of realism, either through the voice acting or the motivations that make sense. So there's an underlining realism there that grounds everything. And obviously there there was certain things in the combat and shooting that felt satisfying to play. So it was a great memory, really. And what's interesting is that not many people played it. I remember at the time, not many of my friends had it. And it felt kind of like a hidden gem and a, a, a quiet one. And those are the types of games I really adore. That was a little brief anecdote to add. I think it's best to add some more context to these episodes to help base where some of my biases and opinions stem from. So from there, let us jump headfirst into the good of Sleeping Dogs. The overall setting. One thing that stood out to me was the fact that Sleeping Dogs is set in Hong Kong. And that alone wouldn't be noteworthy at all if it was on the moon that might have been more noteworthy. No, it's it's because it feels like Hong Kong, and Sleeping Dogs, I think, does the right things in order to achieve this, which some games just gloss over or don't include. First, they do is the language. They nail it on the head for that. Usually if a game like that was westernized, I'm using quotations there, it would be solely in English or it would be dubbed. Whereas in Sleeping Dogs, they sometimes do speak in Chinese in the places you would expect. For instance, it's, it's so balanced, it's not done all the time, but it's enough that it makes sense they would say it in that way. For instance, if someone was doing a... If someone was swearing, they would say it in Chinese because that's what they're used to and that's in their grassroots. And it's that care and detail in what they choose and didn't choose to translate into Chinese is what I really admire. And the second thing they do is the locale. From the signs in the alleyways to the marketplace, it again shows they took the time and care to study what Hong Kong, what a Hong Kong street would actually look like. And it feels so genuine in doing so. It goes to show that if you have the reference material and the creative eye to apply it, you can pull it off really, really well. So even though it's easy to brush off that it's just a place The little details are there if you look in Sleeping Dogs, and they really do pay off to bring it, to bring that good degree of simulation and realism. Sound design and cars. I've chosen to place these two features in as both 
you know, one and the other, because I think they really do complement one another. The sound design in Sleeping Dogs really adds to that Hong Kong immersion, what I spoke about in the first section. From the bustling streets to the cars whizzing by, it, it feels really fine-tuned. The best part of the sound design, though, has to be the radio, by far, and this is why I've linked them two together. I know when a game's music is good, when I stay in a car, in-game, for as long as possible, and purposely drive around the mission point until the song finishes. And with Sleeping Dog's case, half of the soundtrack is on my computer anyway. It's just that good. And what's, what's even crazier about the soundtrack is that they all feel like driving songs. Maybe you could argue a few on the classical ones, but they all feel like when I was driving a car, I had to drive faster or drive to the music. I didn't find myself switching the radio station as much as I thought I would, especially when I think of GTA, I'm always flicking to a few radio stations. But I also understand how subjective music is, so this might not be a popular opinion. But for me, the music and the cars definitely go hand in hand and go into the good section of this show. And finally, I have to talk collectibles and side activities. I like video games. I know, right? I like collecting things, and when a game like Sleeping Dogs does them right, I just have to collect everything and absorb every single little bit of content. The crazy part, though, is that I know for a fact that some of those side objectives was not fun. For instance, the drug busts wasn't mind-blowing at all, and in the end did actually feel like a grind. But that being said, Sleeping Dogs must have struck an instinctual nerve with me, because I had to complete it. I had to complete Sleeping Dogs. I was so compelled and so entranced to complete it twice, yes. And I cannot say that about a lot of games. And so I've asked myself repeatedly, where does the compelling nature of this come from? I've asked myself this so many times, and I think it's down... I've chalked it down to the feeling of being satisfied with the rewards given. From the gameplay side, you have the bullet time mechanic. You have jumping on cars in slow motion, smashing people into fish tanks. Everything about the game felt so satisfying and gratification, instant gratification. And I think I sensed the care and the love that went into this game. Everything was so fine tuned and it wasn't phoned in and it wasn't even needed. No one was expecting Sleeping Dogs, and yet it was made. And those are the games that I think should be praised the most. So from there, now you can imagine that I don't have many bad things to say on Sleeping Dogs. And you would be right. However, there is just one, only one thing that infuriated me about the game so much. And that is the boats. Yes, trying to control a boat in Sleeping Dogs is like trying to physically push the boat from within the water. I don't know whether it was my controls, I don't know if it was intentional, but all I know is controlling a boat in that game is so infuriating. It has to be down to the turning circle, because if you was on a straight path, you're fine, but if you had to turn in any way, any way at all, slight left, slight right, you are screwed. You are literally screwed. But, as I say, that is the only bad thing I could think of about Sleeping Dogs. The DLC wasn't anything to boast about, but they weren't bad, per se. They're just typical DLC. So, those are my thoughts on Sleeping Dogs. Let me know if you agreed or disagreed in the comments below. And if you have any opinions of your own, I really do love to read them. Share this if you know someone who likes Sleeping Dogs. I have been James, and you have just watched the Simply Put podcast show. Goodbye. <laughs>